The SV06 was one of Sovol's most popular 3D printers. One of the main reasons why the SV06 was so popular is that you get a huge amount of spec for only $260. So the only thing left to do was to make it bigger. The SV06 Plus adds a bigger build volume plus a touchscreen for an extra $90. On paper, therefore, you're still getting a lot for your money. You won't find many other printers out there with the same build volume, extruder capabilities, bed surface, and a touchscreen for less. So is the SV06 Plus the best budget large format 3D printer, or is there a reason to avoid it? Sovol sent me the SV06 Plus, I didn't buy it, but as with all my reviews, they have zero influence over the content of the video. If you decide to buy an SV06 Plus, then check out the purchase links in the description, where I'll also put any discount codes I can get for you. The review period of this machine has been much longer than usual, partly because of some issues, but also partly because of something I did. At the point of making this video, the SV06 Plus firmly ranks as one of my top five 3D printers and has earned its place on my rack of permanently set up and running 3D printers. However, it wasn't all plain sailing to get there. First things first, just like my other Sovol machine, the SV01 Pro, the SV06 Plus was quick and easy to set up. In fact, I think it's possibly the quickest to set up bed slinger that I have. As with pretty much all bed slingers, there is some assembly to do, but Sovol make it so simple that anyone can do it, and I challenge anyone to get it wrong. There are milled slots and extrusions and ready positioned connectors that just need clipping together. You do have to attach the extruder, but this is very easy and only requires three screws and a wiring plug. The power supply and control board housing attach easily, and then you're ready to power up. One of the biggest time savings we're getting started is the lack of bed adjuster screws. That's right, the SV06 Plus, just like the SV06, has no bed adjustment screws, and at no point do you need to do any bed leveling. What happens instead is a bed mesh is taken, and this is all that's used to account for any discrepancies in the print surface. This is fantastic for beginners, but the whole system relies on an accurate bed probe, and then well set up software to take use of the measurements that it takes. I couldn't help but wonder if the reliance on an accurate mesh might cause some first layer inaccuracies, so I'll put this to the test soon. As with my SV01 Pro, Sovol's SV06 Plus touchscreen interface is simple and easy to navigate, all of the key menus are close to hand, and the layout is very clear. As with a lot of 3D printers, there was a pre-sliced model on the SD card, so I printed this with the supplied white filament. As you'd expect, this turned out great for something that's so closely controlled by the manufacturer. So back to that bed level. Experience tells me that 3D printers that rely solely on sensors and software to align mechanical components rarely do it well. Sovol are very good at getting on top of firmware and supply some good quality user manuals. So it was very easy to do exactly what they suggested when it came to setting a Z offset and then taking a bed mesh. One thing that surprised me is that they suggest leaving a 0.2mm gap between the bed and the nozzle when zeroing the z-axis. Usually you wouldn't want a gap here, so that when the nozzle moves up the thickness of the first layer to start printing, it is the thickness of the first layer away from the bed and no more. I can only imagine that Solvol are doing something clever in the firmware to take this into account. Either way, I actually found that a gap of 0.1mm was best for a good first layer. To really test the bed mesh, I did a couple of things. I sliced a single layer pattern that incorporated all areas of the bed, printed it, and then measured it at various points with verniers. Amazingly, this is just as it should be. I had less than 0.02 millimeters variance across the entire bed. The bed probe and bed mesh were definitely working. Either that or Sovol have found a way to produce the flattest bed in history, which we'll see later is not the case. As I've said, the manual is good. I hate it when manufacturers don't supply a manual, or even supply one that isn't fully comprehensive. You shouldn't have to have a PC on hand when you're setting up a new machine, ready to Google each problem you face. All the information you need to get set up should be included with your purchase. And this is definitely the case with the SV06 Plus. There's a very detailed user manual which takes you step by step through each stage of the assembly and setup, along with a separate levelling guide that has some extra tips. So to put my levelling concerns to bed once and for all, I printed a full bed single layer sheet, which was perfect. Adhesion is also not a problem at all with the supplied reversible PEI print surface. So on to printing other things. One of the main reasons why anybody would buy the SV06 Plus over the less expensive SV06 is the build volume. 
I decided it was probably best to concentrate on printing some bigger things. So after printing out some smaller models to build some confidence, I designed what could be seen as the ultimate torture test for a bed slinger 3D printer. This box fills the entire build volume of the SV06 Plus and has many, many curves and overhangs. My plan was to print a single wall thickness with a larger diameter nozzle to save some time. However, after looking at things more closely, I realized that Soval had used their own design of nozzle. This meant that nothing else I had would fit, so my only option was to buy larger nozzles from Soval. Unfortunately, larger nozzles weren't yet available for the SB06 Plus, so I had no option other than to use the supplied 0.4mm nozzles and use a double wall thickness. All of this meant that I was looking at a three day print. Everything started well, but before long, I started to see some imperfections in the outer wall. Unfortunately, these got worse as the print went on and around 80 millimeters from the top, the hot end clogged and the print failed. I can't say exactly why the quality was decreasing or even why the hot end clogged, but this was the start of an issue which took me down a bit of a rabbit hole. First, I needed to clear the clog. I tried all the tricks I knew to clear the clog, but unfortunately nothing worked and I was looking at some form of disassembly to fix the problem. The hot end came apart easily enough and the clog was found. I reassembled everything and decided to see if the height of the print had anything to do with the failure. I designed a very simple tube which printed at full height with no problems. I then tried to make things more difficult by printing a similar wavy patterned wall tube at full height. This seemed to be printing okay, but at around 60% complete, I had another clog. This time when I took things apart, I had a different issue. Instead of melted filament jamming the extruder, one of the extruder planet gears had failed. This isn't something you expect to happen on a new 3D printer, so I wanted to understand the cause. I was actually able to reassemble the extruder with only two of the planet gears inside and noticed that it dropped together really easily. When I went back and checked the video of when I had reassembled everything the first time, it was a lot more reluctant to go back together. I didn't feel like I'd forced anything, but I'm pretty sure that somehow I'd managed to assemble the planet gears wrong and cause the damage. Soval were very keen to send me replacements to get me back up and running, but unfortunately it meant that the SV06 Plus had to go on the shelf while I waited for parts to arrive from China. I was hoping that the larger nozzles would arrive with the new extruder parts, but unfortunately they didn't arrive until much later. When the new Planet Gears did arrive around two weeks later, I picked up where I left off by reprinting the wavy tube. This time everything completed fine, but I still wasn't happy with the quality. The SV06 Plus runs Marlin firmware, and to me, some of the issues looked like they could be more software based rather than hardware issues. I also wasn't that keen to run another three day print to see if the large box would actually complete. And I'd just been sent a Pad 7 from Big Tree Tech. The Pad 7 is a clipper pad, and once configured properly, allows a more powerful processor running more advanced software to control your 3D printer. This would mean faster print speeds and hopefully higher quality prints. With the help of some online resources, which I detail a lot more in my Pad 7 review, I was able to convert the SV06 Plus to clipper control. This was when this big printer really started to hit its stride. Many of the surface imperfections I was experiencing were now a thing of the past and print speeds virtually doubled. The all metal hot end means that temperatures can be increased high enough to print with things like nylon, and it can cope with the higher material flow rates that Clipper demands with higher print speeds. The linear rods and bearings allow 3000 mm per second accelerations and much higher print speeds are possible. To me, Marlin firmware and 0.4 mm nozzles that the SV06 Plus comes with massively limit its potential. What's the point in having all of that print volume if the quality is just not quite good enough and you have to wait days for all of the filament to be squeezed through a 0.4 millimeter nozzle? For me, the SV06 Plus with clipper and larger nozzles makes sense. Let's look at some pros and cons. On the positive side, the SV06 Plus is very easy to assemble and set up. It's easily the simplest bed slinger 3D printer I've set up and opening the box to first print takes no time at all. There's a very neat trick that aligns the x-axis without the need for a belt linking the two z-axis lead screws, which was my main complaint with the SV01 Pro. All of the plastic parts look very neat and the whole build is very tidy. One of the benefits of no bed adjusters and moving the electronics and power supply out of the base is that the SV06 Plus has a lower overall height than many other similar printers with the same print volume. Having the control board up on the side makes access a lot easier, unlike other machines that have to be flipped over so you can get into the base. 
Early machines had next to no support on the bed wiring, but I was pleased to see that this has now been addressed and everything is well supported. As we saw, the bed probe and mesh are very good. Once using clipper, it's very easy to visualize how far from flat the bed actually is, which makes it even more impressive. As a clipper controlled 3D printer, the SV06 Plus is a beast. However, as it comes with Marlin firmware, I wasn't all that impressed with the quality, especially as you move up on the Z axis. The only thing I can really put this down to is some form of resonance that's happening on the Y axis, which is then magnified as a print gets taller. Sovol are known for using linear advance in their machines where others don't, and I didn't get into messing around with the settings to try and dial out any issues. I did send a video of the issues and my G-code to Sovol at their request, but as yet I haven't had any feedback on any potential solutions. Some of the other negatives around the standard SV06 Plus are the bespoke nozzles that you can only buy from Sovol. I also found the bed very slow to heat up, which is not unexpected with such a large surface area, but it did dramatically improve once I was on clipper and could do a detailed PID tune. The stepper motors can be a little noisy at times and the spool holder is a little flimsy and can flex with a one kilo reel of filament. Now it may be that I'm just expecting too much from stock Marlin firmware. I tried printing the same models on my Sovol SV01 Pro which six months ago I said was my favorite Marlin controlled 3D printer. And I couldn't actually notice much difference. However, that could be the key. The world of 3D printing has moved on quite a lot in the last six months. And as Clipper becomes more commonplace, we're all gonna expect a lot more from our 3D printers. The good news is you can upgrade to Clipper with one of the Clipper pads or other options out there, but it is gonna cost you more. If you factor another $130 onto the cost of your SV06 Plus, you would end up with a fantastic setup, but do you want to pay that much? I'll leave that decision up to you. If you do decide to buy a Sovol SV06 Plus, then check out the links in the description where I'll make sure I put the best deals and any discount codes I can get hold of for you. If you want to see why Clipper is revolutionizing 3D printers, then check out this video up here. Or if you want to see one of my other 3D printer reviews, then have a look at this playlist. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.